Hello and welcome to the Think Bamboo podcast. I'm your host, JJ, and today our guest is Lorena Nolte, um, directly from Germany. Um, she's a Peruvian architect living since six years in Germany, and yeah. I believe um, she has a, a great um, story to tell and, and about her experience as architect, um, of course, focusing on bamboo and mainly focusing on uh, education of bamboo, which is uh, absolutely key. So um, welcome, Lorena. Um, Thank you. Great Thank to you, have JJ. you here. Thank you, to be, thank you, and great to be here. Thank you for the invitation. You're very welcome. Um, so you have a, a very interesting um, um, background, Lorena, actually. Um, what you told me, maybe you can uh, uh, refrain again your, your journey, how you, you, you met with the bamboo and, and what your background is. Mm -hmm. Well, I was born in Lima, in Peru. And since I was a little kid, my father used to travel all over Peru and all over the world, really. Um, he worked with the different communities, especially the northern part of Peru, with goats and the farmers and how could they improve their lives with the resources that they have, especially goats. So um, he used to take me. So I had this first connection in this rural world when I was really small. And then years passed and I studied architecture and urbanism in, in Lima. And when we graduate in Peru, the architects, we should have, we, we should do a thesis. So we have the architect diploma. We study mm -hmm. five years and then we have the um, bachelor diploma. But if you want to be like an architect, you have to make this research. So my research took two years. It was also in the northern part of Peru. It was not planned. It just came like that. Um, uh, we worked with a community there in the desert, which is called um, Bosque Seco Tropical del Norte. It's like the dry or tropical forest from the north of Peru. So it was about housing in this habitat. And I learned there how to how the communities use the local materials uh, like bamboo, uh, wood, or mud, like adobe, quincha. So uh, by that time at the university, we didn't have any courses about these um, natural materials for construction. We studied concrete and bricks and glass and metal. So um, my approach went uh, to outside of the academia and and it so, was accepted by the university because you went like 180 degrees right i mean yeah yeah and and we proposed different houses like typical four different houses we designed like a whole town really with these materials the materials that they usually uh, used but with this technical um I don't know this this view from the from the university that we had, and then we also apply the um, proportions and Fibonacci, and we, yeah, it was really a really nice research. So, so now, it, yeah. So that's so, interesting yeah. because it, it means that you 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 merge both worlds, right? You merge the theoretical world of the university which is uh, more about modern architecture and construction. Um, what we see everywhere today, right? Uh, bricks, a um, um, lot of steel, uh, cement, um, and that, maybe some wood, right? But um, you, you got the, the, the ancient uh, knowledge or wisdom of, of Peruvian construction, um, which is more with natural uh, and, and local uh, materials. And, um, I think that's pretty, that's pretty interesting. Um, yeah, and in Peru it changes everywhere because, you know, we have different habitats there. So there are different ways um, that people use the same materials, maybe in different ways. Tincha has many versions. So it was interesting and, and we learn a lot from communities. Our first approach for the, the research was just visiting different places in the northern part 
and also making our own research on how the, the uh, Asian cultures uh, designed. So Bayanes, for example, or Mochitas, these cultures that were there for so many years and how did they have different spaces and yeah, it was a really interesting experience. And and have you been able to implement that into into like um, you you told me you, you're really into your fascination or is is to to um, uh, do education and basically a lot of bamboo education I assume. So have you been able to implement that ancient wisdom from those communities in Peru into your uh, educational um, um, workshops or, or yeah. yeah. Yeah, so from a very young age, I was um, teaching almost without knowing it because first I was teaching English to, to small uh, students and then years passed and then I was teaching to teenagers and different things also. So I later did a master program about education and, um, and happily, yes, I could uh, implement bamboo in my courses when I start teaching at the art institute or at the university in Lima. Um, the, the courses, I, I had the same courses every uh, a teacher had, but I always uh, bring bamboo to the classroom. So it was really interesting. For example, um, in Toulouse-Lautrec, this art institute in Lima, uh, in the fifth semester, the fifth cycle, the student has to, they have to design a chair, just one chair. So we do like the, the research about it, ergonometry and different things and then theoretical things. And then they, they have to start, they have to design their own chair and they have to say, why is this with this material or why is this with this shape? So they have to build it basically with their hands, right? It's not just a CAD, computer-aided design and all that. They have to really like cut it and, and, and stick it together. Yeah. yeah. Ah, okay, that's so, that's big difference, right? Because yeah. one is like the brain and the other is really like, okay, now do it, right? Right. <laughs> so sometimes they could, of course, go to the carpenters or, or have some help because it's not easy. But by that time, we had um, Big Bamboo, it was a, a factory in Ecuador. So they sent material to the students, and from, I don't know, 30 students, I got the offer to design a chair with bamboo. So the, the product, at the end, it was very interesting, and it was chosen also for the exhibition that they do annually in a very big place um, in Lima. So, yeah, it, it was great. And then in the university, also, um, I had workshops. So we call it Taller, so it's like the main course from architecture. And we also did some exercises with bamboo and the students get to go to the places where they can buy uh, bamboo. And at class, we explain, okay, where does this material come from? Uh, it should be harvested when it's mature, it should be treated and so on, so you can have a good um, quality product. And and Lorena, regarding bamboo, um, we know, maybe not everybody knows, so I repeat it, there are over 1,500 varieties of bamboo on the planet Earth, and uh, there are, I don't remember exactly, but let's say 50 to 100 varieties in, in Peru. Um, what kind of, of bamboo have you been using? Have you been using the, the, the most common building bamboo, which is Guadu Angustifolia there? Or depending, I mean, probably if, if you got it from Ecuador, it's it's the same Guadua, which is uh, available. But um, what bamboo have you been using? Well, in this exercise for the Art Institute, it was processed bamboo. It was like... Uh they had structural pieces so that it okay. was really hard it was not the raw material okay okay so it was already raw material, yeah it was already yeah. processed but for raw material i use wagua that we have in peru and very good quality also and fever so cool. the students get to have different formats from different cuts from from both of it and they in, in this example they get to 
experiments and the, the task was to design a cell. So they had one line different shapes and different formats and they had to design the cell and then design the connection. So um, they at, at the last of the cycle of the semester, they had like a model that it was very organic. It was really good. It was really interesting also. And, and, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and they had the experience also to talk with the carpenters, bringing their own bamboo so they can cut it. And, and some carpenters said, oh, no, I don't work with that material. It was Classic. for them, it was a shock. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we, we got to talk about that also. So it's still seen as poor man's timber and, and, and that classic issue, right? Bamboo being like not so much liked by a lot of local people, maybe. I didn't get that. I'm sorry. Oh, so uh, I was referring to bamboo being seen as the poor man's timber because it, it, it grows fast and uh, it's uh, people think it, it doesn't survive or, or work as long as, as, as timber, right? So um, they don't want to use it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Even though it's better now, when I started in 2008 with, with my first project, I also okay. heard about that and I was working with PACA and yeah, many people had this idea, it's not a good product. So then I, I got to to work as a Peruvian inverse coordinator and and do workshop construction workshop with communities and universities. And yeah, I, I had some skeptical and um, skeptical <laughs> people. But now I think it's better. I think uh, people can see what's being done, right? Things have improved regarding yeah. the perception of bamboo um which is good <laughs> yes it's a, it's yeah. very slow i think it's slow it takes time <laughs> yeah, for me yeah good things yeah. do take time and uh, regarding um, this workshop because another interesting aspect here actually are the tools right the tools how do you work with bamboo you ca you can use the classical tools we, we use with uh, wood or, or or other tools but it's not ideal right so the tools to really transform or work with bamboo, how did the students do that? How did they manage that? Did you, sh what was the approach there or the challenge maybe? Yeah, since we had um, some experiences before in the northern part, when we came with the tools, which are, they are really simple tools, but they need to have some small modifications. For example, if they want to build a, a beam with raw bamboo and you have to have three pieces, then you need uh, a drill with a very long um, broke yeah. eye. <laughs> right? yeah. yeah, because yeah. it has to pass one bamboo and then the other bamboo, so it's, it's, it's really long. Yeah, yeah for example, so yeah. we have to do some modifications for, for those kinds of elements. And I had people also that, um, for example, Javier and Juan Carrillo, they worked, we worked together. They are really good um, workers with bamboo. So Javier was there at the university and we already had the tools. So we had to explain it to uh, the students. Okay, these are simple tools, but you have to use, for example, um, things that are made for, for metal because guagua it's so strong and the fiber it's it's really strong so if you use the wooden things then you won't have it by the end of the day so we need to buy the ones for metal things like that or make our own modifications so yeah it's it's interesting and and the students got i think the, um, a better idea of the university how things were being done in small communities Okay, um, and um, regarding the, the workshop, um, you mentioned you're working on a future workshop regarding uh, bamboo. Can you share anything here? I know it's not yet there and everything, but maybe you can share some information. Yeah, um, in December, Marcus Hunter and I are going to um, Kaiser Lauten University. The students there from architecture have a very, very interesting project 
and they are working with bamboo in the Philippines. And uh, their approach is also the same, but how to use better the resources in these small communities that sometimes have uh, different needs. So we are going uh, there in some weeks and we will experiment different elements for this project that they have. So for me, it's very exciting now to share with students here in Germany. Cool. So that's the project. I think I did a, a mini podcast uh, at the European Bamboo Expo. Uh, it was from the, what's, yeah, the, um, I think three architects and uh, they did different structures in, in the Philippines with bamboo. Um, yeah. 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 Okay. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, because not... I, this information, I think to get together the people that are interested in working with these materials in, in this kind of meetings, like the European Bamboo Expo was great. We met there. Yeah. So and and you really shared... have to find it, right? Because it's, I think you mentioned earlier also that not every academia or university is yet ready to, to focus on bamboo. One, because obviously in Europe, there is no endemic bamboo yet and very few or none are, are planting bamboo to do testing or, or, or things like that. So it's, it's still very early for the universities, right? They, they're not used to move that fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I think it's the way to go because when I was working, for example, here with an architect doing um, like German architecture, the typical one, and I In was Germany. talking about, yeah, here, yeah, yeah. I was talking about bamboo and for many people, it's like, oh, this is a tropical material, it doesn't grow here, uh, it will produce too much CO2, so not and they don't even research about it so it's like now we have this and this is what we're used to and we want change so that part for in, in this side of the population or its professionals it's been uh, challenging here so universities i think it's the right way to go because they are open to different materials they They're should be right people. yeah <laughs> They shouldn't be. Young, young people are always like more open to, yeah. to new things. And it's interesting yeah. because uh, you said that the carbon, um, um, like, or, or the energy used to bring, uh, I think, bamboo to Europe. But if, if we look at the numbers and if we look at steel or aluminum or other uh, materials, I mean, the number, the carbon uh, number there is, is extremely high. Even sand is like, I mean, normally sand is like extracted from rivers and uh, and you need a lot of it. And for sure it's, it's it's not sustainable, much less it's not regenerative at all. And, and if we compare it to bamboo, which is truly regenerative because it's a grass, right? I mean, it's like, I think most haven't yet truly understood what bamboo is and how it grows and how it continues to grow and the positive effect of it and then how to use it, right? Um, when they say, oh, I don't want to use it because we have to bring it with a container. But, but all the rest, I mean, everything in Europe basically come from outside. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And when they see this bicycle that you see here, <laughs> many bicycle. people need to like, yeah, they say, oh, wow, it's, and they are expensive here. I went to a store and they had bicycles from, I don't remember the country in Africa. It was 2,300 euros one bike. So for, for Germans and in, in this side of the globe, having it's... a bamboo bicycle or a bamboo whatever, it's like an exotic thing, right? And they accept it for products, small products. They accept it. And, and the importation from different places of bamboo, Thailand or China, it's, it's very good. So I think it's a matter of showing people in Europe how can bamboo be used in construction. It's yeah. not necessarily uh, going to be used as a raw material, material, how we use it in, in South America or in Asia, because it's part of the local architecture also. 
here, it could be an, an industrialized material where you can mix it with, with different other waste materials and have, have a hybrid maybe and have a very um, good and high quality new material for construction. And, and there are some um, projects or companies which are starting to, to work with uh, standardized um, bamboo uh, material because one thing in construction which which you probably know very well is the more standardized the easier it is to to build right and, and to say okay uh we have this this standard that standard that, 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 and we build right and with bamboo every if you build like with the poles every piece is unique mm. um so you have to really uh be very um um, uh, detail is about what part I'm going to use for the wall and for this part, because unless you have the perfect, very straight bamboos, which are the, this Guadua from Colombia, um, which is extremely straight, um, but uh, it's it's more of an art, right? And once yeah. you have the standardized band, uh, components, you can build like you build with steel or with metal or with uh, uh, gips or gipsum or whatever, mm -hmm. right? Because it's standardized, much easier and faster. Yeah. So that, yeah. that will change for sure also the, the construction uh, landscape and the rising prices now with all this geopolitical um, um, situation where prices are rising, um, bamboo is getting really on a, on a, on a similar level. So um, I think that the prices for the raw material for construction have really um, risen and um, I don't know. I mean, you're you're in Germany. How how are the are the prices something people are are starting to feel more than before, or is it not yet something in in Germany which is affecting uh, people building? Well, here um, people don't really use bamboo for construction. Everything it's it's going up right now. Housing, it's the prices. Everything it's it's almost duplicated. Um, oh. the, the prices because of this global situation. And, there is inflation. Um, yeah, in Peru now, well, when, when we used to build different things in Lima, uh, and we brought bamboo from the northern part, mostly from a place called La Florida. Um, if it costs in the in the fields, I don't know, eight soles, which would be like two euros. And the treatment, it's like 12 by that time. So you have a, a 20 soles bamboo should be divided by four. So you can have it in euros. And, um, and in Lima, it went, I don't know, for 50 soles each home. So I guess that now it's, it's a little bit expensive also because of this new situation uh, with the wars and everything. And here in, in the Europe, um, yeah, things have been also changing with the prices. Um, I haven't had a chance to buy bamboo here yet because the workshop, we have the, the materials already bought. So they, they have um, been using material from the Philippines and um, I, yeah, I understand. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And and another question I was wanted to um quickly um approach with you is regarding like being um architect and uh, being woman and having worked in Latin America and having worked in uh, now in in Europe. Um do you see or is there any experience you want to share um for the next generation, you know? Uh the next generation of of woman architect or even um what is it you can you can give pass by and say look um um how this is interesting or or, or uh, the challenge in i am i assume in latin america is maybe there is more uh, the the macho uh, mindset and maybe in europe um i don't know there are other challenges so is there um something you can you can give to the future generation the future uh, young people who are studying architecture in regards of of that in connection with bamboo <laughs> <laughs> yeah well in latin america it's it's not unusual to have different comments because 
you're a woman, you're going to these small communities with a team that are mostly men, and you are the leader of the activities because you have to make the design and you're going to have this approach. But when we uh, went to different, it, it not always happens, but it's not, yeah. it's usual also that people expect a man that goes there and, and use the drill and, and the different um, <laughs> tools to, to, to the construction, right? Even the women that um, took place in, in these workshops there, they, they sometimes had to ask permission to their husband to assist to their workshops. Wow. Yeah, and if they had a tool, if they had to drill these beams or whatever, the men were uh, usually making jokes, no? and, and um, like double, with a double meaning thing. Yeah. But I don't know. I think that if we just don't take, don't pay attention, attention to those things, and do what you really love to do. And um, I think it's everything is possible. It is a man's world still, sadly. Women are okay, if you want to do inner in interiors or interiorism, then you can go uh, with an architect that is a woman. And yeah. if, if, if it's a guy, then they will, oh, like, maybe. You know, these kind of comments that are really crazy <laughs> nowadays. But yeah, I think that anybody that loves what they do, I really like uh, making my research about Asian cultures. I really love Peruvian Asian culture. And I live in a modern world. So this wisdom, how can we apply this wisdom nowadays? in construction, in designs. I love to design. So I think that big structures are important. Big, big bamboo structures are important. Um, I think that uh, there are some specific cases that are of architects, women architects that have done really, really nice things. And, um, but also housing, social housing, small structures are also important because People can see, okay, I can have this in my house, so I can build that by myself. So they, it's another spread. Here in, in Europe, I haven't had this um, comment because I am a woman, but I had it because I am Latina. <laughs> so, okay. yeah, another human... <laughs> challenge. <laughs> so, human beings, we usually label. Um, mm. People, we label everything, and we are very, yeah. we judge, right? So, um, to find people as open, and I find people also like that, that are, that are open and they can share your experiences without judgments. Just sharing, I think um, it's not the majority, but you can find it, I think. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, it's, it's, it's interesting to see. Uh the different uh, challenges, right? So Latin America basically is more the, the, the sometimes the macho approach and, and Europe it's more like, oh, because you're Latina, then you're in this label. And uh, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's not better at the end, yeah. not much better, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, but that's the world nowadays. That's the world, so. absolutely. Or that's we... uh, <laughs> That's how things work. The same thing with color or size or anything, right? Um, yeah, yeah. And yeah. The, the last thing I wanted to, um, to to discuss, I don't know if you still have uh, time. Um, yeah. yeah. Is that regarding the adaptability of um, living spaces regarding um, the different, um, like where you're in life, you, you need live, different living spaces. And I think that's also a topic you've been um, uh, working on and focusing on uh, within your experience. So, um, like being 30 and having needs and then being 60 and having different needs because uh, things change in life, right? And the yeah. house or the place where you live should change too. So, um, yeah, maybe you can yeah. elaborate there. <laughs> yeah, so... Um... People in, in many places, they always ask for a house or a structure that will last forever. 
So they want something that lasts many, many, many years. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I don't know why we have that always in mind, but nothing, as you said, lasts forever. Everything changes. We won't live more than maybe 80, 90, maybe 100 years. I don't know. Maxi. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but nothing lasts forever. So I think that the spaces that we are, uh, we have to design nowadays are these that are very flexible. So we can easily adapt to the new situations. So that's maybe working with models, working with uh, panels. So you can have a fixed wall and then you have other non-fixed walls that you can just open the space or maybe close it a little bit more. It changes, everything always changes. So um, and, and yeah, organic, we have to adapt. We have, and, and sorry, and to adapt, organic materials are, are kind of easier to adapt than probably steel and concrete, right? I mean, it's not impossible, but it's it's a huge difference to to cut steel or or cut uh, instead of cutting bamboo. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think steel and concrete and those materials they have us an important role. They we use it also when we build something with bamboo, but um, to integrate these natural materials to our designs. I think it gives them more flexibility. I think it's easier to adapt uh, panels or weaving, maybe weaving panels with fibers. And you have beautiful spaces, high quality spaces, because these materials won't contaminate. And exactly. you, you use just for the needs you have, maybe for foundations, you use the copy, the metals that we usually uh, use. But then you have these other elements made out of fibers or bamboo natural materials. Although they, I don't know many things here in Germany, I, I remember now, I found these panels that they are a kind of incha. So they have like a kind of um, fiber inside and then um, mud. So they use it in small towns. You can buy it in the, in the stores also, in these big stores. Um, and it's interesting, yeah. And it's healthier it's, probably also for like, I mean, it's natural. It's not like some kind of plastic or poly whatever, where you're living and breathing the air. So that's yeah. positive too, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's nice. It's very nice. Yeah. You have different colors natural colors it's really nice yeah yeah i mean i think most people kind of enjoy bamboo once they they see it a lot don't know about it but uh, very few don't don't like it unless they are really like with the mindset that it's for poor people and and that approach right which is in latin america and in asia still a thing because uh, it's the most normally, or before it was like the most accessible material around. So um, yeah, this is uh, <laughs> another uh, mindset challenge maybe. Um, Lorena, is there anything you would like to share um, um, before closing the podcast regarding, um, I don't know, um, experience or... or uh, mm -hmm what's coming up or future projects you have additionally to the to the workshop you're doing in the Philippines? Yeah, I, I would like to invite everybody to just experiment with new things, new materials like bamboo. I know that your podcast goes to a lot of people and not everybody is into this topic. I think it's very, in one hand, challenging, but it's also... Uh, it's very nice uh, to have uh, different designs, to have this approach and respect nature and having like this Asian wisdom again back so we can live with a better quality space. And people that are already in this bamboo world, we all have different points of view maybe. We all have um, our own unique way to do things. Um, I am interested in design, natural materials, bamboo, and education. 
because that's what I love to do. So I will be doing um, uh, online courses also for everybody that would like to join. I will tell you about it when it's more developed. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that I really enjoy, like sharing this, this knowledge and these experiences and also um, to build and design and build new things. So I think the bamboo people that are really working on it, we have to get together. I think there is a lot of different alternatives right now. It's great to have these bamboo expos so we can all share and not compete maybe <laughs> because I don't know, sometimes in, the, in when you are in the same branch with with some people and the ego starts rising, uh, we forget that our main task is to take care of nature, take care of people, and as architects, design and build beautiful, healthy spaces for the majority. So we nowadays we have so many challenges in this world with what's happening everywhere, everywhere. So. Yeah, let's let's try new things with the uh, best attitude and share. So I, I love your your um your thought that more collaboration um and uh, maybe less com direct competing um would really help um probably not just within the bamboo world everywhere but let's start <laughs> in the bamboo world like that and uh, and get things moving forward. Yeah. Um, yeah. I really love that. I, I believe actually the same thing. Um, I think uh, competing is, is good for a certain level, but actually collaboration uh, is much stronger. Um, but uh, hey, let's try it and, uh, and see how things uh, evolve uh, in a better way. And, and really focusing on also what you said on, on improving our environment, improving uh, where we live, with whom we live, which is um, not just the house, it's it's everything around us at the end because everything is interconnected, of course. So um, yeah, let's um, close it here. Dear Lorena, thank you very much for, for taking your time, sharing your experience and, and your knowledge regarding bamboo and um, talk to you soon again. Yeah, thank you, JJ. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you for your podcast. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay.